Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation. Today I will talk about how to merge an existing framework into CanSCI and specifically about how you can test your own kernel project with CanSCI. <clears throat> I uh, my name is Alice Ferrazzi and I am a Gen2 developer. I am uh, the Gen2 kernel project leader and I am the creator of Gen2 kernel CI. Gen2 kernel CI is um, a continuous integration system that is automating uh, Gen2 Linux uh, building and testing. <clears throat> I am also part of uh, kernel CI. Um, kernel CI uh, as the technical steering committee member. I am part of the CIP, a civil infrastructure platform, as a CIP testing working group member. I am working for Cybertrust Japan as a software engineer, and I am making EM Linux, that is an embedded Linux distribu distribution. I am uh, the lead uh, CI system development of uh, such a distribution. So uh, in this presentation, I will talk uh, first about current CI, about uh, what is current uh, CI, how the organization of current CI is formed, and why current uh, CI is needed. I also give a um, summary about how CanSCI uh, is composed. Then I will talk about uh, two systems of implementing uh, your framework testing into CanSCI. One is by using CanSCI native implementation. I will at first talk uh, what is the CanSCI native implementation and I will give an example about the work that I did for CVIP uh, for the stand for civil infrastructure platform and uh, the work that I did for CIP for implementing um, CIP testing emerging CIP testing into a CanSCI native implementation and in the end, I will talk about KSIDB. Uh, I will explain what is KSIDB. And I will give an example about uh, how uh, Gen2 kernel CI, uh, that is uh, testing the Gen2 Linux kernel, is using KSIDB for sending a result to the kernel CI common database. And at the end of this presentation, I will give a uh, small conclu conclusion. <clears throat> so, um, what is CanSCI? Uh, CanSCI is a community-based uh, open source distributed test automated system focusing on upstream kernel development. So, um, this uh, automated testing system um, the main scope, scope is uh, to test the upstream kernel. We are currently uh, testing the upstream kernel on 155 of physical board and virtual board. <clears throat> so in this slide, I will talk about the CanSCI organization. CanSCI organization is divided by the technical steering committee and the advisory board. I'm part of the technical steering committee. The technical steering committee is formed by CanSCI core developer and maintainer. And the CanSCI core developer and maintainer are helping keeping uh, a good status of CanSCI uh, repository. 
and, and infrastructure and keeping a good maintenance of um, KNCI. The advisory board is made by representative from the uh, KNSI Premier Organization that can be seen in the slide. And <clears throat> uh, these uh, Premier Visa representative are uh, managing a KNSI budget, uh, financial budget, and help uh, coordinating KNSI tasks. So uh, KNSCI is sending a um, kernel testing report uh, upstream uh, to the kernel uh, tree uh, mail um, and um, is collecting such a report in the KNSCI mailing list, uh, result mailing list that is linked in this slide. Also, we are collected on the uh, KNSCI dashboard, uh, that is the website in this slide. <clears throat> and uh, such tests can be useful for anyone that is involved in kernel testing and kernel development. KNSCI also give you a tool suite uh, that can be used for um, that is already ready to test um, kernel tree uh, in uh, a variety of different unique board. The kernel CI composition is made by uh, the main tool of the kernel CI is the KNSCI core that is keeping uh, the core configuration of KNSCI. Um, most of the configuration that you will need uh, are do done into the KNSCI core. And into the KNSCI core, there is also the co core tools of KNSCI that are the tools that are sending jobs for uh, building and testing the kernel. There is also the backend that is currently uh, being reworked. And inside the backend, we have also the old uh, KNSI API. Currently, uh, we, we are making a new KNSI API. And the old KNSCI API can be seen at the api.knsci.org website. And currently, um, we will uh, support the KNSCI, uh, the old KNSCI API until uh, the new KNSCI will not will uh, replace uh, the old KNSCI API. We have a front end that is the KNSCI web dashboard that is um, sh showing um, all uh, the data available from the KNSCI backend. We have a test definition repository uh, that is keeping all um, the Lava test job that are using by KNSCI for sending uh, each test job. So uh, if you want to add a um, test, a new test job, a new test to KNSCI, uh, the place to add the code is in the KNSCI test definition. We also have uh, the Lava Docker um, repository that is um, useful if you want to have your own KNSCI Lava Testing Laboratory, and that can be useful for um, uh, collaborating with KNSCI with your own board. 
if you want, but uh, can uh, uh, be tested also in some in board that you own, or if you want to sh share your resource for testing with CanSCI, and is easily implemented with uh, Docker. We also have Jenkins, that is uh, <clears throat> the, the part that is orchestrating uh, <clears throat> building and testing by using a CanSCI core tool. Also, um, <clears throat> we have a KCIDB, uh, that is the tool to submit the kernel test data to the kernel common uh, database. Uh, in the next slide, I will show the bigger picture of kernel CI. So the uh, red part, the upper part, is uh, the kernel CI native implementation. So uh, there are the lava labs and labs that are used by CanSCI for um, <clears throat> building and testing the kernel. And in the um, under part, uh, we have the independent testing framework that are the <clears throat> independent framework uh, that are sending uh, their own result to the kernel CI common database by using KCIDB. And so we are collaborating uh, to kernel CI uh, by using KCIDB. <clears throat> so kernel um, CI try to be uh, distributed as possible. And so also each kernel CI test lab uh, can be uh, started by anyone <clears throat> and so anyone can share their own uh, lava lab with CanSCI. So any uh, lava lab uh, with a public uh, API can be added to CanSCI. Currently uh, we have uh, many um, test uh, lava lab that are uh, connected with CanSCI. And we hope in the future to see more of these uh, testing lab connected with CanSCI. <clears throat> so uh, in this presentation, uh, we are talking about framework. Uh, what we intend to say about framework is a testing framework that is including kernel building, uh, booting, and testing code. For example, the CIP, uh, CIP Civil Infrastructure Platform Project, has its own uh, framework uh, for testing the CIP SLTS kernel tree. Mm. So as I was explaining during at the summary part, um, we will start uh, from this presentation, we will talk about how uh, to merge your testing framework into CanSCI. Kind of <clears throat> and from what I see, uh, I see mostly two ways of merging a testing framework into CanSCI. Kind of One is uh, by using a uh, CanSCI kind of native and the other one is by using KCIDB. Uh, KNSCI native um, is uh, by merging um, directly to uh, the KNSCI testing code. <clears throat> and for example, in the next slide, we will explain how uh, we managed uh, to add the CIP test framework code uh, merging, merged into a uh, currency native. And the other one, a uh, KCIDB, is the tool for sharing kind of, uh, testing result with um, kind of testing result uh, in the 
CanSCI common uh, database. Uh, for example, in this presentation, I will explain how um, we jump to CanSCI, uh, which is automating uh, the Gen2 Linux uh, uh, testing, is sending the Gen2 Linux kernel testing into uh, CanSCI common database for collaborating with uh, CanSCI. <clears throat> so uh, we have the CanSCI native implementation. The CanSCI native implementation is um, VCI for uh, the CanSCI uh, for automating, building, booting, and testing of kernel tree. And that is the main scope of the CanSCI native implementation. <clears throat> is managed and developed by the CanSCI uh, TSC team and the CanSCI community. Also, um, <clears throat> we have uh, the test, CanSCI native test job are in, currently are in Lava job format and they need to be generalized as a generalized for run on different CanSCI lab, lab environment. <clears throat> so because uh, CanSCI native uh, tests are generalized uh, by um, merging their own uh, code for testing kernel into CanSCI, <clears throat> you can avail of uh, all the generic uh, testing feature that CanSCI already have. <clears throat> also, um, it's possible to use CanSCI API support for uh, doing, um, for sending test, for example, to CanSCI for uh, CanSCI is offering uh, some tool for interacting with CanSCI. Also, by using CanSCI native, uh, we already have a um, production ready tool for testing kernel tree. It is a community maintained by the CanSCI community and is can use CanSCI test lab. <clears throat> the, um, the cons about um, CanSCI native, uh, for example, on, uh, is uh, that uh, some implementing some tasks or steps that are um, not into the scope of CanSCI. So, uh, not about uh, testing kernel upstream. Uh, for example, with uh, Gen2, we have, we have some uh, task step that is for uh, testing uh, some uh, kernel package. And such things are currently not uh, uh, possible to be upstreamed to CanSCI and because uh, they are not in the scope of CanSCI but they are also complicated uh, to implement into CanSCI. And, and so in such case, uh, they will be needed to have a separate fork of CanSCI. <clears throat> uh, so on um, CIP uh, working group, um, we uh, decided uh, to start uh, merging some tests if, into uh, CanSCI and to start to do some CAP uh, kernel testing with uh, CanSCI. Um, and this decision was taken uh, because of the CanSCI native uh, pros. 
So in the next slide, uh, I will explain uh, what is CIP and how SAP man managed to merge uh, is testing framework into Kernel CI. So CIP stands for Civil Infrastructure Platform and <clears throat> is a Linux Foundation project with the aim to establish a base layer of industrial grade tooling using the Linux kernel and other open source projects. <clears throat> and you can see the page link in this slide. <clears throat> CIP testing framework is uh, using GitLab pipeline for um, uh, together with um, the Lava CIP lab for building, booting, and testing the uh, super long term support and super long term support real time kernel. <clears throat> and uh, on the CIP testing framework, we have some uh, tests like uh, spectrum meltdown testing and some uh, user space tests like some security uh, standard tests. Such tests are done uh, by on uh, root test using ISA CIP call. Uh, that is used for user space testing and is the uh, CAP root FS. <clears throat> we also um, testing uh, the CAP kernel it is tested by using the CAP kernel configuration that is uh, on the CAP kernel configuration repository. So by uh, having merged uh, CAP into CI, we started to get um, regression test mail and release test mail. So for each uh, CAP release, uh, we get like the current status of uh, CAP kernel. <clears throat> also, um, we could start testing some configuration from the CIP kernel config repository and use some such uh, configuration with um, kernel CI, uh, with uh, uh, CIP kernel on kernel CI. <clears throat> and uh, we implemented uh, some tests using the CIP core rootfs is a CIP core uh, on CI, <clears throat> and we could run some CIP and CI test on the CIP kernel. Uh, for example, uh, KSEP test and LTP, but also uh, we could merge uh, spectrum and down check uh, upstream into CI. CI have also a tool for automatic dissection of regression. So in case that CI is found in some regression, it will start to do uh, automatic dissection and send in the mail of the dissection. But uh, we just uh, recently implemented it. So <clears throat> we yet have to see mail about uh, dissection and we hope to see more mail in the future. <clears throat> and also by using CI, we can avail of uh, CI resource and CI uh, laboratory, uh, laboratory CI connected uh, laboratory uh, and all the board of the connected laboratory. <clears throat> So adding um, the kernel tree to kernel CI is really simple. So as I was saying from the uh, kernel CI structure, uh, the main uh, repository of kernel CI is with kernel CI core. <clears throat> and 
with a current cycle, we have a configuration directory that is keeping the main core uh, configuration of CI. <clears throat> we have um, the build configs configuration, the testing config, and the laboratory config, and rootfs configuration. For uh, adding a kernel tree, uh, we have to add to the build configs configuration. So in which case, uh, we add the tree uh, CLP and with the tree, uh, with the CLP uh, tree URL. And uh, for making it uh, monitored by kernel CI, uh, we have to add uh, a build config that will allow uh, the tree branch uh, to be monitored and tested by in this case, we added the branch Linux uh, uh, 4.4 uh, CP, and we have a variant that will specific which configuration will be tested, and and also like uh, which uh, um, <clears throat> setting, my building setting will have. Also, V3, uh, we specific what we uh, set it before, uh, so the CAP3. And just by doing that, this, we could see, uh, we could get some <clears throat> result uh, email. So, <clears throat> This is one example of the CIP result email. And in this example, we had 184 build, and three of that was failed, and we have 101 passed. And we get such a report for each uh, CIP release. And also, if something broke, we can get a regression email. And uh, this uh, regression email, uh, it will um, it will tell if something that previously was working currently uh, it doesn't. And here we have uh, the log file, and we can see uh, the log of the board, and that will show more in detail what happened. Uh, we can see uh, the last success. Um, so the last time that uh, these tests passed, and we have these passed tests with CIP 61. And then we can see the some snippet of the error. <clears throat> so, uh, after we implemented the rootfs, and for doing this, uh, we, um, we are using, um, my rootfs are still created uh, using the GitLab pipeline and uh, using ESR, that is um, CAP, that the integration system for automated root system generation that is using uh, CIP. <clears throat> All the creator rootfs are pushed with CI uh, API uh, to the uh, CI storage server. We are still using uh, CI old upload API and in the future, we uh, will start to move to the new API when uh, the new API will be ready. <clears throat> and um, in uh, the under part of this slide, 
we can see um, the example of the Canessia storage. And these uh, CIP rootfs image are used by Canessia CI for some uh, CIP testing. And <clears throat> we can uh, here see how uh, Canessia is using the rootfs that are in the Canessia storage. This setting is still done under the Canessia core um, part, that is uh, the main part of Canessia and you know, the Canessia core repository under a test configuration setting. And here we have the rootfs configuration. <clears throat> Second, uh, we uh, started implementing a test to that are that was on that are on the CLP uh, testing framework, but not yet implemented in CanSCI upstream. And Spectre Markdown check was not yet implemented in CanSCI upstream, so. Uh, we uh, decided to uh, upstream the test to CanSCI. <clears throat> and this, uh, the test was actually already on the CanSCI test definition, but just was not enabled. So for enabling the test, uh, we just had to add the configuration script to the CanSCI core repository, uh, there is the Lava configuration directory, and we added the configuration script for making a uh, Spectre Markdown check uh, work. And by enabling a uh, Spectre Markdown check, uh, we could enable such check not only for CIP, but also for all other uh, board and kernel. <clears throat> So here is the example of how um, how is a lava test job uh, that is uh, in this case used by uh, Spectrum and down check. So is some uh, YAML file and this uh, lava test job is made by a metadata metadata and um, inside this metadata we have the name of the test in this case is spectra meltdown check we have the format uh, that is lava test with test definition 1.0 we have the description that is uh, about uh, the test job description we, have, we can add the maintainer email and the environment that in this case is using lava test shell environment then we have some uh, steps that are needed for running the um, test the test job in this case uh, we have a sim we have a shell script and so uh, lava test job can be uh, also some shell script or uh, some other code that can be run on the, uh, <clears throat> on uh, the Lava platform, and and then we have the send to Lava that is checking the output result of the uh, of the shell script that will check uh, if it found any. Uh, fail or pass and send such result to Lava. <clears throat> also, uh, we could have a CAP a web dashboard that is under currency.org uh, domain. <clears throat> and is a good way for uh, see um, the 
a summary of all uh, CAP test uh, result and the build status. Next, I will talk about uh, the other way of uh, working, collaborating with KNCI, that is by using KCIDB. <clears throat> so, uh, KCIDB is uh, the KNCI database service and tool. And the tool, the KCIDB tool, are used for uh, sending a result. Um, submitting and querying a result uh, to the KNCI common database. <clears throat> so uh, KCIDB uh, can be easily implemented in uh, any independent uh, continuous integration framework uh, workflow get that is testing uh, the kernel. We have a tool, uh, KCDB is um, a tool for unifying uh, test results from different uh, continuous uh, integration system and sending such results in the KNSI common database. <clears throat> because of that, uh, KCDB is trying to standardize some of these um, continuous integration system report that are testing uh, the kernel. For using KCIDB, uh, we need a KCIDB credential. So, um, the good part of KCIDB is that it can be easily implemented in your current workflow. And so you can, if you have an independent um, uh, continuous integration system that is uh, <clears throat> that uh, is um, that have some part that are not specific to a KNSI scope but uh, you still want to send your result to kernel uh, to the KNSI uh, by using KCDB uh, you can implement uh, you can send collaborate with KNSI on your independent uh, continuous integration system so it is useful if you already have a um, kernel testing framework uh, that differ from current Sesco. And of course, because it's your uh, independent testing framework, you can tolerate your system on your own uh, way, um, not only about uh, the current scope of current CI. But um, <clears throat> because uh, KCDB is uh, mainly uh, about sending a test result to the kernel common, uh, KNSI common database. Uh, you cannot uh, benefit from KNSI native feature like bisection or uh, regression detection. And you need you need to maintain, of course, your own uh, independence uh, framework. And you, uh, if uh, like a uh, KNSI test are using uh, Lava jobs, so it can be still compatible with some of the KNSI tests, but uh, KNSI native is already enabled for. Uh, his own test framework. And also, uh, you cannot use KNSI um, connected laboratory. Uh, and the machine and board connected to such laboratory. 
unless uh, you ask you ask uh, for um, uh, access key by the laboratory owner. <clears throat> so, um, KCDB is currently used by Gentoo Linux, uh, Red Hat, CKI, ARM, uh, Google Sysbot, CI, and Linaro Taxit. So, as I said, um, the implementation is really simple, and Gentoo Currency CI, the Gentoo Linux uh, kernel testing system, uh, implemented it by having a step that is collecting the kernel, the uh, Gentoo Linux kernel um, test result, and a step for sending such tests to the uh, using KCDB to the uh, kernel CI uh, common database. So, because it is uh, implemented into your testing framework, uh, you don't have to send change to the kernel CI native implementation or your change to be approved by kernel CI team. For Gentoo kernel CI for sending a result with KCDB is using KCDB submit, that is uh, one of the tools inside KCDB. <clears throat> and we have we are aggregating uh, the Gentoo kernel Linux uh, testing result into a data file, and this we are sending this data file. Uh, to a CNSI common database. And we can see an example of this data file, but uh, this example is still using a KCIDB IO uh, schema uh, four, uh, uh, three, and but um, recently uh, the version four came out and in the future, we will start uh, working into implementing the uh, version 4 also in Gentoo kernel CI. <clears throat> there is the KCIDB dashboard that can be seen from kernel CI dashboard on, uh, by clicking on view statistic about all the data. And we can see the <clears throat> Kernel CI uh, common database and, and the dashboard that is made by Grafana. So, concluding, um, in this presentation, we could see two ways of collaborating with Kernel CI. One is by using Kernel CI native, and the other one is by using um, CNSCIDB for sending a result to the CNSCI uh, common database. <clears throat> we think that um, collaborating and reusing code test case uh, is uh, especially on doing kernel test is really helpful to the kernel community. So, if you are interested about kernel CI, uh, you can access to the kernel CI documentation on this slide. And also, a uh, kernel CI have uh, its own uh, channel. So, if you have any question, you can <clears throat> use the uh, question or answer on this uh, part of this presentation. But also, uh, if you are interested in helping out with CI or uh, have any question uh, <clears throat> that uh, out of this presentation, you can ask everything on this channel. And any, uh, any question is welcome.
So thank you so much. And thank you. <clears throat> thank you for listening.